Right, welcome back. In this video, we will be covering the save to do entry. Now, just a quick comment. Uh, while I was editing my previous videos, I came across this part where I actually wondered if everybody knows what's going on here. What is this double dot there? So just to be clear on this, this is just some syntax uh, sugar, like they call it, just to make your syntax look a bit better. But for example, the only thing I'm doing here is I'm actually going to this query builder object. It's this one there that we created. And if I put the dot there, you will see I've got access to the where clause. So I could have just done this instead of this line there. So let me comment out this line. And I could have ended off the semicolon there and just said query builder dot where clause equals. So it's exactly the same thing. So when you're using the double dot there, it's actually adding more than one thing on one line. So I can do everything in one line. I've just placed it in the second line here. But if I wanted to, I could have had this directly there. So it's one line of coding where I'm setting the where clause at the same time. So it's up to you how you want to do this. I just thought I need to clarify that part because I'm not sure everybody knows what's going on there. So you could have said just query builder dot where clause because if you go to your data query builder, hold down control and click on it, you can see the where clause is one of the properties of the data query build and it is set to nothing. So very important that we actually go and set it. So that's how we set it. So for example, if you go to that data query builder again, you will see it's got another field called the having clause and the having clause is also empty. So we could have done the same thing by just going here, adding an enter and saying having clause there and we can set the having clause to something else. Okay, so it's just a way of in one line, basically setting a lot of things. Right, so let's go down to business. For this video, we will need to look at save to do entry. So again, what is the save to do entry? Uh, remember that we've got a to do entry that we want to save per user. So if you go to your to do entry table, this is what we are saving per user. We've got this list of to do's and the username, and those are the only two that we're really interested in. The object ID, the created and the updated, were created for us automatically. So we're just looking at to do's and username. So when we are saving the data of this to this user, the to do's list or the to do's of this user, we want to save it with his username and with the to do's or the to do list that we have here. So when we're saving a new to do entry, we will just be passing in the username. I will explain this in UI now. So we're passing in the username to know for whom to save this list of to-dos. Okay, so where is this list of to-dos in any case? There is the list of to-dos. And also, when we called, where are we now? If we call this get to-dos, we have got a to-do entry already set for that specific one, but the to-dos could have changed. So what we want to do here is to make sure that the to-dos for the to-do entry is still up to date, and then we save back this to-do entry. And by the way, if you get the to-do entry like this from backenders, you will also get with it the object ID. So when we save it back, it won't create a new one. It will just update the old one. Right, so let's go back to our save to-do entry. Okay, so let's just quickly answer this question. Why do I have this Boolean that says in the UI? Okay, so to save the to-do entry, the user can go and they can click here on the save button. So this is in the UI. He clicks the button and then it saves this to-do entry. Another way that we will look at right at the end is what if the user forgets to save and he clicks to go out of the app? Then we also want to maybe save his to-dos for him. Okay, so that part will then be not in the UI. So if we're in the UI, we want to show the progress. But if we're not in the UI, it doesn't make sense to show the progress. Okay, hope you get that part. So we'll get to that right at the end. Okay, save the to-do entry. The first thing we will need to do is to check first if this to-do entry that we've got at the top, and you can see the to-do entry is currently null because we did not assign a value. So the first thing I want to do here is just to make sure that that value is not null. So that to-do entry, if it's equal to null, and we're going to save, we're going to set that to-do entry to a new to-do entry. So we give it a value. The to-dos that's currently on the screen, 
Don't know why this thing would be null, but if it is null, we're going to go there to that to-dos on the screen. And that to-dos, we need to actually convert to a map. Okay, so at this stage, if you hover over the to-do entry, you can see that the to-dos is in fact a map. And we've got the to-dos currently here as a list. Okay, so what do we need to do? Can you remember what we need to do? So we need to convert that to-do list to a map. And we've got a method for that or a function for that. Convert to-do list to a map. And that's the to-dos. So the to-dos, or you can use uh, the underscore here because we are in the same class. So we're going to take this to-do list that is currently a list of to-dos and that is displayed on the screen. So remember in the get uh, to-dos, there we have the to-do set. Okay, at the top, it start off as nothing, an empty list. Okay, so we convert that to-do list back to a map for the specific username that will be passed in. Right, so the else part will be the to-do entry is not null, which means that that user existed, we got everything back from the database, and we want to save this new to-do entry. So then I'm just going to go to this to-do entry. I'm going to go to the to-dos and set it to convert to-do list to map and passing again in that to-dos. And you see now the problem here, it says again, it can be unconditionally accessed because the receiver can be null. But uh, yeah, here in the Dart tools, it should have picked up that I've actually tested there that it is null. So if it gets to this else, it can actually not be null. So I'm going to have that as a forcing that to-do entry to not be null. I know it cannot be null because uh, this to-do entry, we tested there for it to be null. So if we get to the else, it's not null. So we're going to go to the to-dos and we need to update that to-dos. So I'm replacing the to-do entries to-dos with this to-dos that we currently got on the screen. But we need to convert it to a map. Right. So there we've got our new to-do entry or our to-do entry set. Remember, I'm going to just recall back here, get back to get to-dos. There we've got the to-do entry. That to-do entry will have an empty list or maybe a list with some items. And then we take that list and we refer to it as the to-dos. And then we make changes and changes and changes. But when we want to save, we need to place this to-dos back to to-do entry. Okay, so that's exactly what we did here. Okay, now remember we asked uh, if it's in the UI, so I'm going to check here if it is in the UI. Then we must set this busy saving, because now it is saving it to do. We're going to set the busy saving to true. You remember at the top, we had busy retrieving and busy saving. We used retrieving in get to do's, we're going to use saving in saving the to do's. Okay, so we set busy saving to true and we notify all the listeners. So now it should be showing the progress indicator. Okay, now we go to await and we want to actually send this now to backenders. So we go to backenders.data and you remember this, we've done this a few times now. We can go to of if we want to go to a specific table. Where's the table that we want to save the data? Well, this will be the to do entry table. So your spelling must be perfect. It's this one to do entry on backenders. So I want to save in that table. For that one, I want to call the save function there. And I need to pass in the entity I want to save. And that's the object that you want to save in the table. So in the table, it becomes a row that you're saving or an element inside of this table. For Flutter, the table we call a class and every element inside of this table in backenders in Flutter, we call that an object. Okay, so we're going to save that entity or that object. So what is the object that we want to save back? Well, it's this to-do entry. So again, it's going to tell you here, the argument to do entry can't be assigned to the parameter type map. So this is an error because our to do entry, if you have a look at to do entry, is of type to do entry, but back endless accepts it as a JSON or a map. So if you look at save, it needs a map that's dynamic, dynamic. So for this to do entry class, if you go to to do entry, you can see that we can convert it to a map there. It's called to JSON 
and that will convert this. The username will become the username column in back end. This to dos will, will be the to dos column and so forth. Okay, so what we need to do is take our to do entry that is of type now to do entry, but back end this needs it as a map. So we're just going to say to JSON and that converts it to a JSON or to a map. Okay, so if you look at this to JSON now, it says that the you cannot use to JSON because the receiver can be null. We know at this stage that that cannot be null. Okay, so await back in this data dot of to entry and we save to the to entry or to do entry table. We save this new to do entry. Right, and then we can remember also right at the end, we can also have the on error. So for the on error, I'm just going to use the double braces again there. Okay, and or the opening and closing brace, and in the on error, we will set the result to error dot to string. Right, so now in this line of coding, it seems like more than one line, but it's actually one line of coding. We go to the to-do entry, we save that entry, uh, we forced it to not be null because we know if it is null, we have given it a value. If it's not null, it's got a value. So I'm not sure why uh, it doesn't pick up that we can actually use it yet. Okay, so there's the to-do entry and then there's the error if something occurs. So now again, if we are in the UI, we must now stop showing it. So I'm going to use exactly the same thing there and we will just set this value to false. So when we are done with everything, if we're still in the UI, we, we call this function save to do entry inside of the UI, then it means we started to show progress and then here we must end showing the progress when we're done. All right, and that's it for saving the to do entry. So yes, it was a mouthful because uh, we need to convert this to-do list to a map first so that we can save it as part of the to-do entry. And then for the to-do entry, we need to also convert that whole thing to a map so that backenders can understand it. Right, so if you have a look at this class now, we have done all the functions inside of this class, So or this yeah, to-do service class. So we are done with to-do service. But now because we are calling this um, save to-do entry, we must maybe also have a helper for that. So let's go to helper to do and see we still need to do this one function. So we've done a refresh to do's in UI. We've done this one. So this is the only one that's left. So save all to do's in the UI. So that is when the user clicks this save button. Right. So we just need to call this to do service called save to do entry. OK, so let's go here and that one returns back a result. So we're going to have a result here. And the result will be await context.read. We're going to read from a specific class. That class is the to-do service. On that to-do service, we want to call that save to-do entry. Okay, so there's two things we need here. We know that save all to-dos in UI. We know that we are in the UI, so I'm just going to pass in the true value there. So this is clicking on the save button in the UI, and that's then the one we want to use. So how again do we get the username? So the username will be saved for me in the user service. And remember, we've got that username under this backend this user. So if the user is logged in, this current user will have a value. And by going to current user, if you put a dot there, you can see you get the email. Okay, so we just need to refer back to this class called user service. Okay, so in order to get the username, we're going to go to context.read. We want to read from the user service class and there's a current user. That current user, yes, can be null, but we know when we get to the UI that user can actually not be null because he is logged in then. So for that current user, we're going to get the email address. Okay, and if we save, we've got this on one line now. So go to context.read from the to-do service, call the save to-do entry. The save to-do entry needs a username and whether it's in the UI or not. So yes, we are in the UI, and this is the username by going to the user service, going to the current user, and getting its email. So now we've got the result. It could either be OK or something else. So let's test it. If the result is not equal to OK, then we will show the snack bar with the message that will be our result. The else part will be to just show a snack bar and tell the user that we have successfully saved everything. 
So here we're going to say data successfully saved online. Right, thank you very much for watching. So in this video, we've covered how to save this whole to-do list or the to-dos now for the specific user to backend list. And then also in the helper class, how will we handle this in the UI? When we click on the button, we will call this save all to-dos in UI and that will actually save it for me. And that's all for this video. I will see you in the next one when we link up everything for the UI.